All right, we're gonna do brakes on a 2018 Nissan Murano four-wheel drive. So this is an instructional video on how to do brakes. We're gonna do front and rear. So this video is gonna be for the front. Check the other video for the rear, okay? This way you don't have to, you're only doing front or rear, you don't have to watch both videos. So the complaint is anytime you get up to any kind of speed, touch the brake pedal, you get the crazy shaking, the wheel wobbling and shaking, pedal pulsating, your butt's pulsating everywhere. All right, so 99.9% your brake rotors are warped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to take this apart, put it back together, and then go for a road test. All right, so we're doing brakes on this Murano. First thing you're going to do is you're obviously you're going to take the wheel off. You're going to try to get this all the way to one side. And then I'm going to show you what sizes and what to take off. All right, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove 17 millimeter, these two bolts right here. Okay, set them aside. And next thing you're going to do, this actually comes off. Okay, you might have to just pry it a little bit to squish the, the brake caliper on, but it'll come off. Okay. Set that up here. Out of your way. I'll show you what to do that in a minute. Now you need to take these two off. All right, 22 millimeter. Okay, now I'm taking them off. With an impact gun. All right, and get this off. So basically you're just taking this off. This whole bracket will come completely off with the pads on it. Then you'll take the pads off. So you can see what's happening with this is this is wearing the pad, all kinds of messed up. So a lot of times in that right there, these need to be really free. So I'm gonna take those off and lubricate those. And I'll show you what to do with that. All right, so once you take those two bolts off, take the caliper off. This bracket just slides off with the brackets, with the brakes on it. And then this rotor basically just comes right off. See that rust in there? You want to try to clean most of this off with a wire brush. Put a little bit of anti-seize around this hub right here. Because if that rotor doesn't sit nice and flush, then you get issues. All right. So now with this, okay, you can either take a big pair of pliers and squeeze these back in. Put the put one pad in here like this. So you basically take a take one of the old pads, put the pad in here, and squeeze it together. Um, or they make a little tool. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so you got this right here. That'll sit in there. And it'll actually compress those two pistons back in. They need to go in. I mean, they're gonna be a little tight, but they need to go back in pretty free. Okay, you can flop this over to the other side because it won't sit in the middle. If it's a single piston, it'll sit right in the middle. Okay, so you can see it's, you know, it's got a little bit of uh, resistance, but basically it goes right back into place. So that's good. That's one thing you wanna make sure that the caliper is not stuck, that the piston's not stuck in the out position or trying to go back in, it won't come in or out sometimes. Okay, and that's from, uh, dirty fluid and the reason the fluid gets dirty is because inside this hose these hoses they break down on the inside so the brake fluid breaks the hoses down so now you can see that's all the way back okay that's all the way in just check this one one more time all right those are in and then we will take a wire brush clean all this out Clean all this out, clean all that out, clean all that out, blow everything off nice and clean. And same thing with this bracket with the caliper. I'm going to show you what to do with this next. Okay. So, 
first off, you're gonna take the brake pads off. They just slide out of place. If you can, keep the original hardware, because the original hardware is 100 times better than the aftermarket hardware. Make sure when you're putting pads on, whatever brand you're getting, see how it's got this, looks like a, like a piece of metal right onto the back of the pad. You wanna make sure that you have that. That's an anti-rattle, anti-squeal pad. You don't have those, you bought the real cheap ones. You're gonna be replacing them because you're gonna be really mad when you start hearing grinding noises and squeaking noises and squealing noises like you're killing a pig under your car. So you want those, okay? Opt for the better pad. I'll show you which ones we use, okay? So now this, same thing, that's all gonna get cleaned up. These are gonna get cleaned up. This, okay, you're gonna take this off. Right, you're gonna pull it out. It's gonna pull out. Okay, that's the reason why these are like that. Okay, you need to pull this out. You'll see it. Just loosen it from the piston, from the little rubber thing. That comes out. See how dry those are? Okay, let me show you what I use to put on there. Okay, so after you take a wire brush and clean up as good as you can that hub right you want to get that hub as clean as you can get it and to keep that from happening again put some of this on okay and all you're gonna do is basically take a little bit of that this stuff is very nice just put a little bit on there like that don't get crazy with it okay that'll keep that from rusting and keep it off the hub so it doesn't do that again this same thing you're gonna just clean all this off right clean all that I'm gonna do this after I drop put the camera down clean all that off blow it all off clean all that blow all that off and then you take this pin and we use this stuff Okay, you can get everything from Advanced Auto Parts. That's where we're getting all our stuff from. Put that back in there, slides right in. Now it's nice and free. It goes in and out, it spins, it's nice. Okay, gonna do the same thing with here. Clean all that, blow everything off, and then I'll show you what shoes, and, I mean, uh, what pads and rotor. All right, so, that's the part number for the fronts. part number for the front for the pads okay gold pads that's what you want to use same thing with these these are painted rotors all right they're the better ones that they have they're really good Parkwest makes them advanced auto parts all right so let's do it I'll show you what to do with the rotor before you put it on all right so you got your rotor you open a box up it's in a plastic bag. The reason it's wrapped in plastic is because they coat them with oil when they're sitting on the shelves so they don't rust. So that oil needs to come off. If you don't put that on there, if you don't take, see that, you can kind of see that filmy oil filmy. That's got to come off. So get brake clean. All right, you can see it. You can see that, right? Okay, so brake clean it all off clean. Wipe it off. Okay. Flip it over. You can see. If you don't clean that stuff off, that oil embeds itself right in the brake pad. And then you got issues. Number one, it'll make the, the pedal fade or the brakes fade where it feels like, oh, you got no brakes. Um, and then the other thing it does is it actually makes the rotors warp up. 
prematurely. All right, so now you got that clean. I'm gonna go put it on. All right, pop the rotor on. You had a little bit of grease on there. Got these all ready. These are all lubed up. This goes back on. Your 22 millimeter, tighten two bolts up. All right, well, we had to cut that video a little bit. So when I was putting this caliper on, I mean this bracket on, see the threads in that one? And look at the threads in that one. So they're actually stripped. So I had to get a whole caliper with the bracket. We're gonna exchange that over. So I got that one on, lubricated these, same thing. Put the original ones back in there because they work better. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you on these pads this is the brake pad okay and if you look at the brake pad it's got these funky looking clips on them so here we go like this so this is gonna go in here okay and so the bottom of the pad goes in here right it pushes on that the top one pushes on that Okay, that's gonna go just like so. Okay, that one's gonna go like that, that one's gonna go like that. Now this, this is the sensor, the squeal sensor. So if you look at it, it actually has a gap where it's gonna sit down flat like that. And it just sticks out enough so that when the pad gets down to that, it'll start to make that that squealing noise all right so now you need to push this one back that one sits on the outside and that sits on the inside so I can't do this with one hand so I'm gonna put them in and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like so you know how it sits when it's supposed to be in when it's in the right way okay so you put it squeeze that in Stick the pad up in there like that, get it behind this bracket, and then as you bring it down, then you squeeze the bottom and then push it in place. So when it's in place, it looks like that. Okay? Look it over. And the other one. Alright, so put this back on. Right? You make sure there's a washer on each side of the hose end. Tighten that up. Put the caliper on, tighten the two bolts, and then you're gonna open the bleeder up. And you're gonna wait. And you'll see fluid come out. This is real time. How, much, how long it's gonna take. Always make sure that the hose is not kinked or bent or whatever, kinked. And you're filling up these two cavities. There's the fluid. Now if you watch, look real close, you'll see air bubbles. Right? All the bubbles. And you want to keep doing this. You want to just leave it like that until there's no bubbles. This is how you bleed brakes. You gravity feed everything first. If it doesn't gravity feed, you probably got an issue somewhere else in a hose. But for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the times, it'll drip just like that. When you get that to open up, you can wiggle the hose a little bit and just to help the air get out. But you're waiting for no bubbles. Let's see if I can focus in on that. All right, you still see bubbles. So, it takes a little while, you gotta be patient. And the other thing is, once you let enough fluid out, right? 
So you let enough fluid out, you're gonna go up and fill the reservoir again, make sure it's full. You don't wanna run out of fluid, that's even worse. And so I already topped it off. And okay, there we go. Now you're gonna see just fluid, fluid, fluid. Just let it run for a little bit, All right? And then we can, no air, close it off like that. This thing we can get rid of right now. We'll put that back on later. Okay, just let it sit for a while. Mess with the hoses. A little taparoo here. Get all the air to go to the top. Crack it one more time, and you see the air, a little bit of air. All right, no more air, it's dripping. Okay, no more air. Play with the hose, no air. Oh, there's a little drop. All right, you gotta make sure that it all comes out. There it goes, see it? Okay. And we'll close it up. Let everything sit for a minute. <clears throat> Crack it one more time. And looks good. Okay. Okay, that's it. Now if you need somebody, or if you don't have anybody, go inside, pump the pedal a couple of times, just let it settle, and then come over here and crack that again, and you'll have most of the air out, if not all the air out, usually all the air is out by now. So, I'll have somebody go in there, pump the pedal a couple of times, and make sure you're just gonna probably give it one crack or two cracks just to make sure and it's all done all right so doing the rear brakes same procedure only thing that's different is this has long studs going through this whole thing okay now the top one 14 millimeter top one comes right out no problem the bottom one you take it out but it bottoms out against there so you take that just go back with it pull the caliper back okay got some good light here pull the caliper back and you'll have the two pads in here pop the two pads out and then you got this right okay you have one here and one here and a 19 millimeter you're gonna crack those loose and take this out completely out of the way. Just let it sit here. Clean them off with the wire brush. Same thing. Push the piston back. There's no parking brake to turn here or nothing. You just that'll be that just pushes back nice and clean. And then the rotor comes off. Put the new rotor on. Make sure you take the rubber plug out of there. Put it in the new rotor. Put all this back on. Put the bracket back on. You're gonna lubricate, while this is off, you're gonna lubricate that pin and this pin like we did the front. And then you could put this back, put the rotor on, put the bracket, make sure this is on here. And then put that back and put your two bolts back in. Put your two pads in, flop the rotor up, put the two pins back in, okay? Okay, so you got your rotor back on. If the rotor didn't come off, like it's stuck to the hub, hit it with a hammer right here hard, a couple of good whacks, and it'll pop, that the whole thing will pop off. Blow that all out, put a little bit of anti-seize on the hub, swap over your little plug, that's to adjust your parking brakes that are inside here. There's little shoes in here. Don't mess with them. You put the bracket back on, Make sure you lubricate this before you put this back together because then you won't be able to get this off, okay? And got your pads, same thing. It's got these backing, little backing plates on them. 
that won't make them squeal. One pad is going to have that little sensor on it. Okay, that's a wear sensor. So when it gets to the, down to there, it'll start squealing. That's going to go here on the inside, driver's side, just like that. Okay, passenger side gets, I mean, uh, sorry, driver's side, that's the inside and the outside. The other ones are both the same. This flops back up. Okay, line up your little rubber boot there. Lubricate your pin. Get the pin, make sure it goes through the boot. And that's it. Tighten that one up. Tighten that one up. Once they tighten up, this will stiffen up and stop in, in the right spot okay 14 millimeter 14 millimeter inside ones are 19 make sure those are nice and tight make sure these are tight this floats okay all that back together I'm gonna put the wheel back on I'm gonna go do the other side same exact process and then that's it we're just gonna bleed we're gonna pump bleed that one front brake Put all the wheels back on. All right. Hope you uh, got something out of that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Got plenty of videos on how-tos. If you want to see something done, let us know.